Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Time for the best and the worst lip products of 2023. I actually considered, I considered doing a ranking. I considered it and I was like, no, because I purchased more than 120 lip products this year. Now, I don't have all of them. I feel like there's maybe 129, maybe 130, depending on how my count is going, which ones I gave to my kids, which ones I gave to friends, which ones I, you know, have around here and I can't find. But I pulled everything together and there's about 130 lip products. So we're not going to do a ranking. We'd be here forever. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching. I know so many of you really love lip content, so let's jump into, and I'm gonna start with the worst. Now, these first several are ones that I no longer have. I don't have them anymore, and I'm glad to have gotten rid of them. The first one is, oh, this one made me so sad, it's from Persona. This is the E Balm. I got the red shade. There's, I think, three shades of this. This is a case of I really wanted to like the formula. It just didn't work for me because it was so soft. It's one of those kind of gloss in stick forms. Um, it was more glossy than balmy, so it was really soft. And it, like, as you cranked it up, it just kind of smushed. And it became kind of like this really smushy, really glossy, um, so the packaging was always really messy. And then beyond that, it kind of found all the lines and went everywhere. And with red, I can't have that. I don't need a high maintenance red. I like the way that it felt on my lips. I didn't like the way that it distributed. I was forever having to run my finger over it to get it out of like the, the vertical lines in my lips. But it was a really comfortable product. I liked the idea of it. The formula and I did not get along. This next one, I don't even know that I gave a fair shake to. I just took an instant dislike to it. And I feel like I need to try this formula from this brand again. And it's the Chantecaille Lip Veil. Now I know some people love the Lip Veil, but I got the shade Ruby in my um, Lucky Bag this year. And it was a shade they made for 2022 holiday. And the packaging, stellar red. Oh my goodness, beautiful. And then as you crank it up, it looks red in the tube. And then as you put it on, hot pink. So with a name like Ruby and the external packaging being like fabulous and red, my red lipstick lover's heart wanted a red lipstick and it was hot pink and no, no, I just like, no. So that one's on the bad list and it's not because the formula was bad. I just took an instant dislike. It was like wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> All right. This next one. Okay. This was the year of glossy, sheer lip oil, lip gloss. Like I wanted like you see this? I wanted all of this this year. And when Merit came out with new Shade Slick Lip Oils, they have their original line of Shade Slick Lip Oils. They came out with this new Gelee formula. What I did not know at the time, and there's only four shades in the Gelee formula, is that they were all pH adjusting. So I picked up the shade Maple Tint, which looked like a beautiful kind of like a brown with a little bit of a red tone to it. And what I did not know until I put it on and it turned hot pink on my lips is that these, if you are a pH adjusting person and a pH adjusting formula looks good on you, hooray. There are some of us, not in your wildest, not in your wildest dreams. It always looks terrible. So for me, I put it on and the formula felt good. I liked the color in the tube, but the color on my lips was just crazy. So I had to return it. That one just made me so sad because I do like the formula of the lip oils from Merit. I have um, one in Cara Cara and I like it a lot, but I did not like the new like extension of the line, the lip gelays. No. Last thing I don't have, I think I gave this to one of my kids, was the relaunch of the Elp Squeeze Me Lip Balm. And it's the balm that comes in a tube. They changed the packaging. Um, they put a slant tip on there. And is it a bad balm? No. Did I love it? No. I didn't find it to be as nourishing as I need for my lips. Um, I tend to really love things that have um, like beeswax, lanolin, um, even some petrolatum. Like I like all the things that a lot of other people are like, Oh, I want a vegan formula. I don't want any petroleum products. I want an occlusive. And that one was nice. I liked the scent of it. I felt like it was kind of a small size balm. Applicator was nice. It just was kind of forgettable. And, and not even just forgettable. It just like my lips never really felt like they were getting the moisture that they needed. All right, let's dive straight into products that I do have that were bad probably the worst product that I tried that I still have, and I am ready to get rid of it after this, is this. 
This is the LA Girl Lip Oil. This is the watermelon one, and it smells just like a watermelon Jolly Rancher with just a hint of, <laughs> this is terrible to say, just a hint of chemicals. All right, so this is glossy, this is juicy. I do like this kind of teardrop shape. It has a little like hole in the middle to catch product. It's shiny, it's glossy, it's pretty. It has really no color to it, but it's a really nice formula, but this tastes like soap. And I don't know if it's just the watermelon one or all of them. I was drinking a beverage from a container with a straw this summer when I was trying this, and I thought my kids who do dishes hadn't washed all the soap out of it, and I realized it was the fact that my lip product had gotten around the straw, and every time I was putting the straw in my mouth, I was tasting a little bit of the lip product, <sighs> and then I, I, like, I wiped it off, I wiped it off my straw, like I got a new straw, like it was, it was bad, it was bad. Do not recommend, mainly for the fact that I had such a bad reaction to it. No, 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 no. Okay, here's one. This one might be controversial because some people love this. Now, this does the cardinal sin that I have absolutely no forgiveness for. It's this. This is the Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss from CoverGirl. This was a new release this year for CoverGirl. I love the packaging. I love this chunky doe foot. I like the way that it looks kind of, look at that, glossy. Thick. It's very hydrating. It feels good on the lips. When you put it on, it gives kind of like a glass-like shine. Now, all of that, great, great, great. I actually got three shades. I got the Glamingo Pink. I got, this is the Acai You Later, and I got another one, My Straw Booty. And I gave one to each of my kids, and this is the only one I kept because I like this kind of more berry shade. I mean, it's so pretty. But this commits the cardinal sin. It's such a heavy gloss that it starts to sink down into the corners. And then where my lips touch, it starts to kind of collect there and puddle. And then as I'm talking, it's stringing and pulling. So if you are a chronic over applier, do not get this product because you will, you will be dealing with serious like cheese pull stringage in the corners of your mouth. It also does kind of make your lips look a lot smoother, but you have to put on so much to get to that point. And as you talk, it just kind of sticks to itself and it gives this stringy effect. So if you were to put this on like a whisper thin layer, this is actually a really nice product. It's hydrating, but you'd have to reapply more regularly. Like I like how smooth and glossy it is, but oh, be careful, be careful with this. Here's another lip oil that to me was like delivering none of the good parts of the lip oil and was just not worth it. And this was a new launch from Juvia's Place. This is the Juvia's Place lip oil. Again, the watermelon. <laughs> I love watermelon Jolly Ranchers so much. But again, it's mostly clear. My daughter got the blueberry one. She likes it. I'll probably let my kids finish this up. This is just for the price, because it's a little bit more expensive than some other drugstore lip oils. It's more than the e.l.f. lip oil. Um, it's just not worth it for the price that it is. I don't feel like this is good value for your money. It doesn't add any extra hydration to the lips. Is it bad? No. But is it worth your time or money? No. Here's another product that for me was not worth the price. This one, again, might be controversial because this might be someone's favorite product. This is the City Lips Lip Gloss. Um, I. This is the clear one. I uh, used it with a lip product that was colored, so I, I ruined the wand. And I wasn't thinking that I had some leftover red on my lips. Okay, does this hydrate my lips? Oh yes, this is so thick. It's a very thick, very high, do you see how glossy and glassy that is? This is beautiful on the lips. I can wear this at night as a like lip mask and in the morning my lips still have a layer of this and they're very hydrated. So for hydration, Yes, but there are other things that you can use for hydration that aren't in the $30 range for a lip gloss. Now, maybe I would have liked this more had I gotten a color, but they had a buy one, get one. So I, I bought the clear because it was the one they had on offer. But if I bought one, I got one for free. I still, I mean, and I used it every single day, multiple times a day for more than a month. And you can see I used a large portion of it. I never got the benefits of my lips looking fuller because the claim is this is going to make you look like you got a lip filler. <laughs> maybe for some people, I did not have that experience. I'm not saying that maybe that's not your experience if this is your favorite product. I just feel like it's a lot of hype at a high price point for a gloss. Okay? 
keep that in mind. Here's another lip balm that I tried this year that I was just underwhelmed with for the price. It's from Make. I've had a lot of things that I liked from Make. This is their Lip Reset. This is the one in Violet Vapor. Now, I love the color of it. I like that it comes in this really beautiful um, glass pot with the lavender lid. Everything about this, it doesn't really have a scent to it. Everything about this is luxurious, like the glass jar, the frost, like it's beauteous. But this is supposed to be a lip mask. I wore this several nights in a row as like my lip sleeping mask and my lips were so dry in the morning does not last. It, it, it is very slippy. It's very glossy. But then there comes a point where it sinks in and maybe my lips are really dry, but no, did not like this. I think that for the price, this is a little too expensive. If you're using it like lip balm throughout the day because you want something that's sheer and elegant, it'll work. I'm still using it, but I do not trust my lips to this overnight. I would much rather put a layer of this on than this. This is just a case of wrong product for the type of lip person that I am. This is from Etude House. This is the Dear Darling Water Tint. And this one here, I think is the strawberry one. Is there anything wrong with this? No, I'm not even gonna swatch it because it's gonna leave a like terrible stain on my hands. Um, this is one of those you can see in here. It is literally tinted, like a tinted liquid. This finds all of those fine little lines and whoop, spiders out. It also catches on all of the deep grooves in my lips and kind of settles with pigment inside those lines to accentuate the look of the lines. I feel like I'm a little too old for this type of a lip stain. This would definitely work on my teenage kids, but this is definitely not something that if you have mature lips, I would recommend for you unless you're going to... I don't know. I don't know how to make this work for me. And I also don't particularly like this kind of bright pink color. It's a Korean product. And I know that Korean lip trends tend to be very pink and very red. It's just not for me. All right, I tried some stuff this year from RMS. And the cheek products, mm, blushes and highlights were beautiful. And I liked the highlights from them. But you know what, the lip products, they are not speaking the same love language as me. First thing I tried this year were these guys. These were a new release from RMS. These are the lip lights. Now, is this formula bad? No, this formula is actually really nice. I like the formula. I like the way it looks on the lips, but it's so hard to squeeze out. Oh my goodness, these are so like squeezing, 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 and I'm, <laughs> I'm not getting anything out. Like I have to really work. I can't always work that hard. The other thing is they come in this, um, they're very pigmented lip glosses. They're kind of like a lip gloss, kind of like, they're not really a lip oil, but they're very emollient. Okay, so I like this formula. Here are the problems that I had with it. First of all, squeezing that hard, no, that's, I, I don't have time for that. The other thing is this is an aluminum tube, this little metal tube here. Okay, I already have a problem going on here where this one, this is the one that I've had the longest and I've used the most. I have one small little hole over here. So if this product gets anywhere up towards here, it comes squirting out on the side. No, I grew up with metal toothpaste tubes that did that and my parents used to oh, scream at my brother and I if we weren't working from the end down. Thankfully, they do create a metal turnkey for these, but they do not come. Here they are, these little RMS turnkeys. These turnkeys do not come with every lip light. If you want one, you have to buy one for $5. And then you can crank it down. This way, I think it's good to make sure you're, it helps to dispense the product. But come on, this is, it's too hard. It's too hard, darling. It's way too hard. So although I do like the formula, I would be more likely to use a formula like this if it came in a squeezy tube like this. And I know RMS is trying to be eco-conscious and to not deal with plastic, but I feel like I'm more likely to carry a lip product with me. And so something like this that is very volatile and I could end up with product because it's under pressure in this tube, like getting a little hole in it and it coming all out on the inside of my purse. No, 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 no. The other problem I had is that this cap here I actually had to super glue this cap. The problem that I had is that as you're, you're screwing it on, 
there's very little thickness between here and where the top of the threads are for the cap and the threads here. So as I was screwing it on, I didn't realize I was screwing it on too far and I poked a hole in the cap. So then the cap is not keeping the product in there. <laughs> And I reached out to RMS and I said, hey, I'm willing to buy a new one. Can I buy a new cap? Nobody ever got back to me. I emailed twice and I even mentioned something on um, Instagram and like the um, DMs, never heard back. So for me, I just kind of feel like this entire, although the interior is really nice, I really liked the red one. It, I mean, come on, Babette, it's such a pretty glowy lip. And this one here is kind of like this pretty kind of deep brown shade. I just had to work too hard for this. I don't want to work this hard and I don't want something that's likely packaging fail, like either with the cap or the metal tube. Repackage these and these might be a huge hit. The other thing that I tried were these. These were the legendary lipsticks. These are supposed to be a stain a serum and a lipstick all in one. I got two shades. I do love that the packaging is exactly shows you what color it is. So this one's the red and this one's kind of like this really pretty brown. Um, but I didn't find that these formulas were the same one to another. So this one here is the shade Mickey. I feel like it's a little sheerer. Um, I've talked about these before. <laughs> um, this one here is the shade Ruby Moon and I'm a sucker for a red and this red is beautiful. But do you see how this one looks sheer? And this one is completely opaque. This one you can see there's a little bit more shine to it. This one's a little bit more matte. The red one in Ruby Moon stains. This one does not. This one is hydrating. This one is not. This one is kind of glowy on the lips. This one is not. This one does not go outside of my lip line. It doesn't feather, it doesn't go anywhere, but she's drying. This one is very hydrating and feels amazing on the lips, but it does kind of like find all of my lip lines and whoop, go outside of the lip line. So if you are dealing with feathering, this one's not for you. And then on top of this, this one also has all of the pigment kind of settle into all of my vertical lip lines. And so I'm forever having to run my finger over the surface of my lips to reduce distribute the pigment or smush my lips together to redistribute the pigment so it's not caught in all of those vertical lip lines, which I really hate. So these for $35 each, do not recommend these. Are they bad? No, but at that almost luxury price, I know prices are going up and I feel like a lot of luxury lipsticks are in the $45 range, but if I pay $36, I can get a Lisa Eldridge lipstick which I would totally recommend over these. These aren't bad, but for the $36 price, I need more than what these are offering. Talk about needing more than what you're offering. <laughs> okay, so Beauty Pie launched a Wonder Gloss Luxe lipstick this year. I'm a huge fan of their Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oils. I have probably five of those running around. It's probably, it used to be my favorite lip oil formula, might have been dethroned, but those, a perpetual favorite, a constant repurchase, even though they're $14 a piece, love them, have them in my collection, and they are a fave fave. So when they came out with these, these lipsticks come in refillable packaging. So you can get one of these. I like that the component is magnetic. I mean, I like everything about these. And they came out with this limited edition series of colors that coincided with their limited edition glosses um, for summer. They have kind of like these rose gold caps. So this gloss here is in the shade Island Rose and they have a corresponding shade that's very similar called Sheer Rose. These are so, so pretty. They're so sheer. They can be very glossy, which is what I like about the lip oils. But what's amazing about these lip oils is that these lip oils are tenacious. They aren't like heavy. They don't sink and puddle in the corners. They don't kind of string and pull. They don't commit the cardinal lip gloss in. They impart moisture. They're glossy. They're juicy. They're hydrating. This does everything I want a lip gloss oil hybrid to do. And this was promising the same thing. It was supposed to be really nourishing. Are these bad? No, but I had to reapply these so many times. Like I was forever, like 20 minutes later, pull it out again, throw it on because there might still be a little bit of color, but all of the hydration had sunk in. These did not impart moisture 
for anything more than like 20 to 25 minutes at a time, maybe 45 minutes, but I felt like I was forever pulling these out. Um, I liked the shades. They had a nude, they had a peach. Um, they had this kind of rose tone shade. They're, they're nice. They're just nothing to write home about. And I'm at the point right now where I want my lipsticks to be fabulous. I liked the refillable packaging. So here's the peach, here's the nude, here's the rose. Were they okay? Yeah, but these are $20. $12 for the component, $8 for the refillable reusable packaging. And at a $20 lipstick, you are not doing enough to impress me. These are definitely something I don't recommend. This next lip product started out as like in love, obsessed. And the farther along we've gotten through the year, the more I'm like, mm, I don't know, but let's talk about it. These could have very easily been in the best, but I think there's one thing that's happening here that's making me go, okay, so it's these. These are the Wet n Wild Rose Comforting Lip Colors. These are beautiful. I mean, they are kind of like that click up, um, balm, shiny balm or gloss in stick form. I like these. My favorite one was this one here called Taffy Daddy. I also really love the red one in Cherry Syrup. Man, these, this is everything I was wanting. I wanted one of these gloss and stick form at the drugstore at an affordable price. And when I bought these in February, these were $5.50 a piece. Yes, now, is the packaging chintzy? Yeah. Did I have problems with the lid cracking and breaking and now it doesn't snap on? and stay on? And do I find it like this in my purse? Yeah. Okay. Beyond that, if, if we could give like an extra, like I would be willing to pay an extra dollar to get better packaging. So instead of $5.50, I'd be willing to pay $6.50. I think the formula is great. But with that, the other thing I would want is a fragrance in here and them to re-look into the formula because now these aren't even a year old. These smell expired. These smell like rancid yeah i can't and i can't bring myself to use them even though i like the colors even though i like the formula these are hydrating they're glossy you see how glowy they are they stay like this on your lips they don't settle into those vertical lines they don't really go everywhere these are so pretty like on the lips they look fantastic they're a sheer wash of color they're glossy they're hydrating they but now they're not even a year old and they smell like they're past. So I would want a fragrance in these and maybe what is it that is making these smell like they're off and then fix the packaging snafu where this breaks and then the lid doesn't stay on anymore. I don't like that. So because of the scent, the fact that these didn't even last a year and the fact that the packaging is always breaking and really chintzy, that's how they ended up here. But the formula and what they do, I was in love with these the first half of the year and it wasn't until August that I pulled them out. I was like, ugh. So they didn't even last like half a year. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. They're affordable. They are that gloss and stick form. If you are a one lip product sort of person that you, you know, use every day and you use up at the end and you're not going to have it for too long, get one of these, get the one shade, wear it, wear it, wear it all the way to the bottom and get another one or try something else. Don't have a huge collection like me with these guys because although they're beautiful, they just, they smell like they're bad. I got an entire set of Tarte, maracuja juicy like lip products this summer and it i couldn't believe it. it was a steal of a deal it was a qvc deal and it was like 39 dollars. i got three of the juicy lips three of the juicy plumps and three of these these are the lip creams the maracuja juicy lip creams okay is this a bad product no like it it looks nice it's not hydrating the way that the Juicy Lip and the Juicy Plump are. Um, out of the entire Maracuja line, this is just, it's just forgettable. The colors, I got three of them. I didn't really like the colors. I don't reach for them. This for me was like, I would much rather have had three more, either of the Juicy Plump or the Juicy Lip and skipped this like cream lipstick situation here. I feel like at the tart price of $24, because if you were, if you get the set, it doesn't matter. The set is like a steal of a deal. And for $39 shipped, I got nine lipsticks. 
I have no room to complain. But if you are making a purchase from the Tarte website or at Ulta and you're paying full price, I am not going to tell you to spend your money $24 on this lipstick. No. Revlon came out with a new longwear lipstick this year. This is their Colorstay Suede Ink Lipstick. I wanted to love this so much. I got the shade Hot Girl and it's a really pretty shade. This formula feels like it has a lot of silicones in it. Um, it's a matte formula, but this dries my lips. Does it stay? Yeah. Does it make my lips look dry and crusty? Yeah. Does it kind of shrivel them down to a raisin? Yeah. <laughs> so this is trying to do what a lot of long wear lipsticks are going to do. First of all, this is not the sort of formula that I like. A matte, affordable long wear lipstick. I'm always looking to see if there's a good one but I would rather trade that I'm not going anywhere, I'm on your lips, I become one with your lips and kind of dry you out. I would rather trade hydration for that. I would rather reapply. I would rather have to double check is it still where I put it or is it kind of outside of where it needs to be because the minute it does this, and this is not a bad formula, this is just me and this type of formula, not a fan, not a fan. Another one that's like that, and I got this one accidentally this year. This is a Dior lipstick. It's very similar in formula, one of those that when you put it on, it's matte. It's supposed to be 16 hour wear, but dude, does this suck all of the life out of my lips? And at $45, I thought I was getting one of their velvet matte formulas. I didn't know I was getting one of the transfer proof mattes. So, Mm, I like this color. I just cannot handle this transfer proof formula. This was new in 2022, kind of like in fall. I tried one and ugh, sucked the life out of my lips. This is one that I would, if you can handle a more drying lipstick and instead of a liquid lipstick, like a bullet form, you might like this. You might also like the Revlon, but it's just not the sort of lipstick that I like. But I feel like these formulas, not that they're dupes, but they do the same sort of thing where they go onto your lips, they stay there, but they are really very, very drying. Last lipstick this year for me that was the worst, and I wanted to love this so much, and it's perhaps because I got the wrong shade. And people may be in love with this, but it's the Hourglass Unlocked Lipstick. This cream formula is so, so beautiful. The problem with this, this one's so pretty, this one's called Dahlia, it glides, it's comfortable on the lips, and, and it might just be Dahlia. First of all, I like that it's a magnetic closure. I love that, but if you don't put it in right, it doesn't go in, and it, you'd think it would go in. It only goes in one way, and that's nice, but um, I have a problem with that. The other thing that's hard is that I like to store my lipsticks with the label up so I know what shade it is, and because this is at an angle, it's always, it doesn't stand up. It, it leans over. Okay, that's a small quibble. Packaging though, I mean, come on, it's so pretty. I like the gold packaging. It does feel very luxe. It does have a lot of those high-end luxury touches. And this is what, mid-30s, like $36, $38. I wanted to love this. And the formula is beautiful. But this one right here, I was not gonna go and spend more money on any of these because this one turned my lips hot pink. I think that there is a pH adjusting thing in here and I'm, I don't know that it's supposed to be but this shade it looks pretty like this but, but at the end of the day my lips are like fuchsia pink and so I never wear this. I never never wear this. I like the way it feels. I like the way it wear. I like everything about it except for in the end that hot pink color starts coming through and then this does not end up looking like this. It ends up looking kind of like ah, crazy with this kind of, kind of, you know, pinky nude shade going over the top. But oh man, I don't know. I wanted to love this so much and this was just not for me. I feel like I got a little salty there. <laughs> and, and my goal is not to sit here and kind of bash these products, but to explain them to you in a way so you realize, is this for me or is this not for me? What type of product do I like to wear? You and I may not have similar tastes when it comes to lip products. We may not like similar colors or similar formulas, and that's perfectly fine. But my hope is that I'm able to explain things to you in a way that it makes sense and you're able to make an informed decision. Because I would hate for you to go out there and spend 45 dollars on a lipstick and not love it. I would hate for you to go to the drugstore and even spend five dollars and fifty cents and not love it. I want you to know what you're getting into. And a lot of times some of these products were just like, you know, 
Huh, for the price. Huh. Same thing with these guys, a lot of, no, and some products I actually loved, I just couldn't stand the packaging. And I think all of that kind of has to come together and be part of, is it worth it? Thank you so much for watching today. I would love to know which products are the worst products for you lip-wise. Doesn't have to be something new you tried this year, but what products have you tried that you're like, no, 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 I cannot do this lip product. Let me know what it is in the comment section down below. And if you love something that I'm like, meh, Tell me about it as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. Next one's gonna be the best. Have a fantastic day and I will see you again soon.